In this video, we're going to take a look how you can set up your analog controls for Rocket League. Now, Rocket League is an example game. You can use these same methods for other games. Now, we're going to jump straight into the utility here. And you can see that I'm in digital mode, which you can see from these rainbow colors I have mapped here, but especially here, digital profile. Now, of course, we want to have an analog profile. So let's jump to our analog profile one here. Now, this is a blank sheet. I still need to set up everything and we're going to do it together. So if you're familiar with the utility, you're quite familiar with this view. It's still very much work in progress, so it's not the final version. There's still some functions missing, but for this video, we have everything we need. Now, the first thing we need to ask ourselves before we even get started with the utility and this game is, is the game even compatible for analog on the Wooding One? Now, I know that this game is out for the Xbox One, so it must have X input, and X input is supported by the Wooding One. And X input is the Xbox controller buttons. We can see here, gamepad bindings, I have my X input buttons here that we're going to set up later. So to do a quick overview of the utility, you have here your RGB colors, the Xbox controls I just mentioned, the keyboard settings and advanced gamepad settings, which is for the analog curve, very interesting, we'll jump into later. Now there's two methods we can set up analog control for a game. And that's one, with digital keys on, and two, without digital keys on. Basically this means your keyboard keys. So if I have them turned off, I can't type anymore. I would have to switch back to my digital mode or digital profile to start using the keyboard and typing and everything. We're going to do it first with digital keys on because that's the most convenient and easiest and we'll see if it's going to work or not. So let's start off with, we need to start doing some gamepad bindings for the analog control. So we're going to jump into Rocket League, take a look what the gamepad bindings are and start setting it up. All right, we're in Rocket League. So let's jump straight into the settings and see what those bindings are. Now we see here that right trigger, left trigger, and left joystick are binding to driving. Those are the interesting keys because those have analog control. But if we go further down, we see here A, B, X, and A. Those are face buttons. They don't have analog, so we're not too interested in that. We already have digital keys on, so we can use those for those buttons. And I'll get back to that in a second. Now we have air steering here for left joystick. That's interesting. And right joystick here is for camera control. Now we have a mouse, so we don't need right joystick here. We can skip that. Now I think I know enough to set up the controls in the utility, but before we go back into the utility, I want to show you is that I can still use my digital keys right now because I have them turned on, meaning that with WSD I can drive and I can do all the other buttons like the power sliding that we don't need to set up the controls for. What we want is to change WSD now in analog controls. So that's what we're going to do in the utility. We saw in the game bindings that left joystick and uh, trigger keys were the most interesting. So that's what we're going to do here. Now I'm going to change the left joystick to WASD uh, because that's for air steering and for left and right steering when we're on the ground. And we saw that the triggers were for accelerate and braking. So let's see, right trigger for accelerate W and left trigger for braking. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's set up. Then we have our controls. Uh, I think this is enough. We don't need to set up any other controls for X input. Let's save it. Now, one point of attention is you saw that I used my digital keys before and this activation point is very important. If you plan to still use uh, digital keys, make sure your activation point is all the way at the end of the key, which in this case represents 100%. Otherwise, what will happen is that the key will activate before or during your analog range, and we don't want that. We want it to activate at the end. Otherwise, it's gonna kill your analog range. So that one is set up okay, so that's good. Then let's go into Rocket League and take a look if it's working. Exciting moment here. Let's try it out. And looks like it's working. I'm driving very slow now, meaning that I have analog control. Now let's try to do some turns here. Oh, with the turns I'm noticing I need to press down very far and it kind of jumps very fast to the left or to the right. So this means something is not really okay. Either I need to change my analog curve or there is something in the game settings, which in this case is, that is killing my 
analog range. And here we have it, controller dead zone, and it's on 0 0.3. I don't know how much it represents if one is, the, no, not even, but it's a lot. So we don't want that. We don't want any dead zones because we can control our own dead zones in the utility. So we're gonna take that all the way to the zero. And now let's try this again. Okay, you see there I can make very small turns now. Much better. Oh, much better. So that fixed the problem there, but I'm noticing that I don't really like how it doesn't go very smooth for me. I don't like how far I have to press to make a certain turn, so we're going to optimize the analog curve. And for that, we need to go back into utility and change the analog curve. Here we have the advanced gamepad settings and the analog curve. Now, the thing I didn't like was that it quite slowly built up to my turn and then it made a quite big turn and I want that to happen slower. So first, I'm going to find out where is my starting point? Where does it start to turn when I press down the key and how much of a turn do I want to start with before going towards the end? And the way to do this is by changing your analog curve to make it all flat. And the reason why I want to make it flat is so you can control and see how much of a turn you actually make at a certain analog value. Now, like I said, Util is a work in progress, so you don't see any values here. Uh, that's still work in progress. So let's change the dead zone here to uh, the middle, for example, to see what happens. Let's save it and go back into the game and take a look what the effect is. All right, so let's drive. Now I'm going to press this, I'm pressing this halfway and I'm pressing it all the way down. And you can see now what happens is that nearly all my analog range is just one value, meaning it's going to be in this turn during my whole analog range up until I reach the end where it makes the full turn. So I feel that the starting point is a little bit too strong turn. I want it to be a little bit slight, more slight than this. So we're going to adjust the analog curve, make it the value a bit lower, the starting point a bit lower, and then I make it linear and the utility. So let's jump back in again. So having the analog value start at this middle point was a bit too strong, too fast. So we're gonna make this a bit lower right here. Let me put it all down by the way. Okay, so I want to start about here. I think we'll be good. So I'm gonna make it linear now. So it goes smoothly up. Actually, I want to be a little bit more in the lower range and then nearing the end that it goes up to its max. So I can have a little bit more fine control for most of the range. And we're gonna save this. Let's give this a shot. Analog curve feels pretty good. I would want to tweak it a little bit more because I see it jumps a bit on the end. But for the video's sake, this is uh, sufficient. Now, now that I've set up my analog profile, I can uh, start gaming. And you can see I can still use my digital keys here, which makes setting up analog profiles so much easier because I only have to set up the analog controls and I don't need to set up all the other buttons of the controller. Now, it doesn't work for every game. Uh, some games will have some interference if you have your keyboard, digital keys still on, but for Rocket League, it seems to work just perfect. Then we get to our final step, is a little bit of troubleshooting. It might be that when you start up the game, it doesn't recognize the Woody One analog controls because it doesn't recognize the controller. It sometimes does that when you only bind the analog sticks because it doesn't see those as buttons straight away. So what you need to do is to bind and fit one of the face buttons, such as A, for example, and I'll bind it to H here as an example, save it. And then when I start up the game, I just press H a couple of times and then it will recognize the controller and all my analog controls will start working. Once you've done that, you don't need the utility anymore. You can throw it off the PC if you want, turn it off. You can plug the keyboard into another PC, still play Rocket League with that same profile you just made or any game with that profile you made because the profiles are all saved onto the keyboard. The utility has no interference in between. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, please let us know if you have problems or have feedback for maybe the utility or some games or have questions. You're always welcome to leave a comment behind and otherwise we'll see you in a next video.